Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and as you can see, I'm playing Minecraft. Now, I've been pretty hesitant about uploading any sort of Minecraft material to my channel, just because there are so many people out there already doing Minecraft Let's Plays, they're also doing, you know, custom servers, custom maps, and whatnot, that I feel as if I couldn't bring a whole lot new to the discussion, so it was probably safer to just not include it. But obviously, I am including something, because... Lately, a couple of my friends have been getting me interested in Minecraft Hunger Games. You might actually know them, they're pretty popular in the Hunger Games community. There's Tag1421, M1520, Stiff Aids, Fist Deep, and Turtles in a Box. And actually, in this game here, I'm playing with M1520 and Turtles in a Box. So you're probably asking, well, what the heck is the Minecraft Hunger Games, and why is it so unique that you feel you can put it on your channel? Pretty much what it is, it's a 150 person server, give or take depending on how busy it is, where people start off in the same area and they pretty much kill each other until they're the last one standing. Well, how is that any different from normal, you know, PvP in Minecraft? What makes it really interesting is the fact that this server has different kits that you can choose from, some of which you have to pay for, uh, but they also have them on a weekly rotation so that they're free. Uh, and each kit gives you certain abilities. They can be, you know, advantageous in certain situations, not so much in others. Uh, for example, I'm playing as Vampire, so anytime I kill uh, a person, I kill an enemy, a sheep, I get some hearts back, which is pretty useful. Um, Am1520 is playing as a Ender Mage, so he gets a Ender Portal, which can draw people to his location if they're directly above him or directly below him, which is pretty good, as you'll see later. And I believe Turtles in a Box is playing as an archer, meaning he gets, I think, he starts out with a bow and he also has the ability to get shale from dirt blocks or something like that. Not incredibly useful, but he enjoys playing it. So in terms of general Minecraft Hunger Games strategy, I definitely recommend teaming up with a couple of your friends. Just because most everyone else teams up, and if they have superior numbers, it doesn't matter how proficient you are with your kit, chances are you're going to die. And one of the good things about teaming up with your friends is you can sort of coordinate with each other. One person can be crafting while another person's on the lookout. Uh, same thing for mining. The worst case scenario is having someone drop in on you when you're not paying attention. They get a couple quick hits in and then you're done. So a good example of this is myself and Turtles in a Box both go to this crafting table. Uh, where is he? He should be popping in soon. Or not. And 1520s running about up there. There he is. Okay, so we're both minding our business, and then all of a sudden, this crazy naked chick comes out of nowhere, starts attacking on him. Fortunately, I was there, got a couple of hits in, and we were able to save each other. Now, this is another great example of why you should team up with your friends. Different kits have different strengths and weaknesses, and if you can kind of coordinate with your friends, you can get a really powerful group formed. I mentioned before Amp1520 is an Ender Mage, meaning he can draw people that are underground up to him. So one really good strategy is at the beginning, instead of going and mining your own iron, you can actually find people that are doing that and then pull them up and kill them really easily because they have no idea what's going on. They're just mining in their own business, digging for iron, and then all of a sudden they're on the top of the cliff and then you can knock them off. So that's what we were trying to do. We were just going around finding people to kill and seeing if they have any iron. At the same time, making sure we have good food, that we're not getting dropped on by anyone. And as you can see, this guy had quite a bit of iron, even had an iron sword, which is definitely a huge improvement. Uh, diamonds don't typically drop in this game until later on, so what you want to do ha is have a full set of iron gear. That way you have the best chance of surviving. Uh, we come across a guy here, or at least Am1520 and Turtles in a Box does. I try to maneuver around so I don't hit them behind because hitting your own teammates is not a good thing. Here we catch another guy that was mining by surprise. He has no idea what's going on. He doesn't even have his sword out. So we get a couple of quick hits in and then I go for the kill, which is actually one of the few kills that I get in this game. And another good example of teamwork, these guys are crafting away and then all of a sudden I hear a, a creeper from nowhere. My spider senses tingle and I manage to uh, alert the group and we take it out safely. Because, I mean, a creeper explosion from point blank behind you is definitely not a good thing. And here's something that was really funny. I don't know what happened to this guy. He was just, oh shit, I'm going to die. And all of a sudden, boom, he died. Probably starved to death. He might have fallen in lava. I don't know. Uh, embarrassing deaths like that can be pretty annoying. 
So at this point here, we find another guy that was just mining away. He had a lot of iron. He had a lot of iron armor, a lot of iron swords. So we were pretty much stacked at this point. We had everything that we need. So we just started going on a rampage. This guy here had no chance. He didn't even react. And again, we got even more iron. So we were coming down towards the last couple of people. We locked onto Panda522, who actually was probably our biggest threat in this game. He was actually killing quite a few people left and right. And uh, I didn't mention this before, but at the start of the game, you get a compass, and this compass can be used to lock onto people's locations. So it's not like you can just go and hide somewhere. People will eventually find you because they can lock onto your location. And this is how we've been finding people underground and using the uh, the Ender Mage ability to take them out. Uh, we eventually come across Panda, and he is putting up quite a good fight. He's using Mushroom Stew Hot Barring, which is a really good strategy for healing your hit points while you're in a battle. But because there are three of us, we do get quite a few hits. I almost died there. That was really close. I used a couple of Mushroom Stews there just to make sure I'm okay. But uh, as you can see, Amp1520 got the kill there. He actually got quite a few of the kills. But then all of a sudden, he disconnected. And we were a little worried. And then I got caught on this dirt block. And I tried as best as I can to get away from it. Didn't work. So I decided to disconnect. Fortunately, I was able to reconnect. Turns out, we were right on top of the feast. Now, what the feast is, it's a timed event where, uh, you know, a stretch of land will just kind of appear and a bunch of chests will also appear in the middle. And these chests typically have some really game-changing items. Tac1421, he's also really popular in terms of Hunger Games. He likes to use the, uh, the phrase, you know, control the feast, control the game. And it makes perfect sense because inside these chests you can find uh, diamond swords, diamond equipment, uh, lava buckets, flint and steel, dynamite, pretty much anything. Lots of food as well. So if you can get the feast items, you can be in a pretty good situation. So here we are. We found the feast. That's why we were bugging out. Uh, just reconnecting made it so we were okay. We know there's someone out there. But we know the feast is about to begin, so we decided to make our way towards where the chests are going to spawn, because we're feeling pretty confident. We have three of us, fully iron armor, full iron weapons, full hunger, full hearts. We feel as if, even if there's a team of two or three people, we should be okay. And I do spot this tower off in the distance, which kind of leads me to believe that they're camping out there, so we should be okay. But you never know. There's one class in this game called Stomper which kind of abuses Sky Fortresses. If they jump on you, they transfer all the damage from the drum to you, and it can do some pretty wicked damage. But we're not going to worry about that for now, because obviously the feast is beginning, and poop, all those chests pop up, me and Turtle on the box run in to see if there's anything useful in them. Uh, find some steak, which is really useful to have, water bucket, if you're Poseidon, that's really good to have. I got a diamond sword, which is huge. This is the best thing you can have. Also a couple of heal potions as well. And that, the best thing to do when you have multiple people is try to split up the, the loot evenly. We didn't really get that lucky with this feast. There was one diamond sword and then like three or four diamond helmets and that was pretty much it. Uh, there is also an enchanting table which is very, very important. Make sure you enchant your stuff. Um, and also make sure you only use one level because the difference between the first couple levels is not that huge. So I do get a sharpness one on my diamond sword which is pretty useful. And I put on my really cool diamond helmet. We all match now. We're pretty cool. And I figure, you know what? I should probably enchant that as well, including my body armor too, just because I do have the extra levels from killing random mobs and whatnot. And so for my armor, I ended up getting... I forget what I did get. I think projectile protection, which is not the greatest. If you're going against an archer, it can be useful, but really it doesn't play that big of a role. And then for the helmet, I get something even lamer. I think it's like Aqua Affinity 1. Yeah, and I mean, I didn't even use that at all. And so Great White Noob is TSW, SW, I have no idea what that means. But we're we're feeling pretty good. We're in a good position to take out anyone we want. But as I'm minding my own business, all of a sudden, a huge-ass explosion behind me. Turns out Turtle in a Box was using the dynamite that he found in the chest to blow up the feast, just so that none of those items could fall into uh, other people's hands. I was really close to that explosion. I kind of felt it push me a little bit. I was really, really... uh scared about that we had a good laugh during the the skype call but uh yeah talk about close calls as you can see there's still some random garbage in there but we don't really need it as we're pretty much down to the last couple of people i think there's one person left and we don't really know what to expect we think it might be a stomper that's in the tower up there but we don't know for sure so we start making our way towards them and the hope is that we i mean there's three of us so at least one of us should live 
So I'm trying to lock on. Eventually, we do lock on to the great white noob and I start making our way towards him. I think Turtle in a Box is behind me, and then at 1520 is slightly ahead of me. But we do eventually find him. I think it turns out he's not in the tower. He's actually just kind of minding his own business above ground. And there you see, I locked onto him there. At 1520 has him in sight, so I start making my way down towards him. Trying to do a little pincer maneuver, but uh, looks like Ant 1520's got the drop on him, and yeah, he gets the kill. So there's only three players left. That's the three of us. So we're feeling really happy now. We're pretty excited. One of us is guaranteed a first place finish. And to celebrate, we do the celebratory pose, or at least we get into position, and then we do the pose. We just kind of block our swords. We crouch. Um, they decide to take it a little bit further. They go closer together, and finally they do. Come on. There. Yeah, they go for the kiss. I didn't want any part of that just because who am I to interfere with true love? So as with any, you know, tradition, we wanted the first place person to be fair. Uh, we had iron swords and our diamond helmets and that was it. We're allowed to use mushroom stew, but pretty much it was a free-for-all. So Amp 1520 is going for turtles in a box. I'm going for Amp 1520 just because, you know, he plays a lot of Minecraft Hunger Games. He's definitely the favorite. I thought I could get the surprise on him, but he does a quick double take, managed to do some crazy damage to me, I couldn't heal up in time, and he takes me out. But fortunately, Turtles in a Box was able to kill him off and get the win. So all in all, it was a pretty good episode of Minecraft Hunger Games. If you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'll definitely be doing live commentary as opposed to post commentary, just because it really it, it captures the enthusiasm and the excitement, especially when you get surprised or when things go well and when things go wrong. So again, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.